all the sorts that we wrote previously were comparison sorts. And so they compare one object to another. Also, when we were working with arrays, they would happen in place. Now, it turns out that comparison sorts can only go so fast. Uh, the, the best order you can get is order in log n. We're not going to prove that and at this point. Hopefully, it's something that you'll see later in your careers. But it turns out that you can do better than that if you know information about the data that you're sorting. So there are some other types of sorts. For example, the radix sort will allow you to sort integer values as long as they're, they're of a fixed size. You know, so for example, int can only go up to 2.1 billion, roughly. You can sort ints in order n time. Okay, so now there's a fairly reasonable coefficient in front of that. But basically, it, the how long it takes will only scale as the number of things that you're sorting turns out that we can do the same for uh, doubles using something called a bucket sort, assuming that the values that we're sorting are uniformly distributed. So for example, when we call math.random, we get numbers between 0 and 1, and we have an equal probability that things are in, in, in low values and high values. Basically, everything has an equal chance of happening. Bucket sort is really good in that situation. It's not good if you have non-uniform distributions. So I want to come in here and we're going to edit our sorts and we're going to write a bucket sort. Turns out that the bucket sort not only needs to know certain information about what we're working with, it also does not happen in place. It needs to have some additional memory to work with. So bucket sort, it is going to take an array of double and we're going to modify that array so we don't need to give back anything and the concept of the bucket sort is we create a bunch of buckets uh, and we're going to stick values into those buckets based upon their magnitude and the buckets themselves will be sorted and then we're going to pull stuff out of those buckets. So first things that we need to do, we need to find a minimum and maximum value for the things inside of our array. So I'm not going to do this in the most efficient way. I could do this in a single pass, but I'm just going to create two variables, min and max, that have those values. I'm also going to create my buckets. Now my buckets is going to be an array. And there's a question of how many buckets should we have? There are, this is a something that you can play with to make it go, to, to try to tune it. A simple first guess here would be I could actually make it the length of my number of, of elements. It turns out that when you play with this, you might be get it to run faster if you make it a little bit smaller than that. Um, but the idea is these things are uniformly distributed and we want to keep each bucket because inside of each bucket we're doing an insertion sort uh, basically at least that's one way of doing it uh, another way of doing it is actually to do the buckets not do insertion sort into the buckets and then actually run an insertion sort at the end uh, in fact I think I might write that one uh, well we can go either way so I have my I'm filling this in and I want to fill it with lists of doubles that have nothing in them. Okay, so each one is an empty bucket and I'm using a list that way I can easily add stuff to it. So what I'm going to do is run through all of the values in my array. So for x in a, what do I want to do? Well, I want to calculate where that goes. So that's going to be x minus min. So I want to take, I have a value that's between min and max, basically. And I want to convert it to a value between 0 and a dot length minus 1. Okay. So something that would be a valid, or sorry, dot, yeah, well, or buckets dot length. So I want to take that, and I'm going to multiply it by buckets.length 
and I'm actually going to put a minus 1 in there, and then I want to divide that by max minus min. And we can take a second to see how that's going to work. If x is equal to min, this is 0, and so it doesn't matter what you multiply and divide by, b will be 0. If x is equal to max, well then that divided by that is 1, so we get buckets.length minus 1. Everything in between should be uniformly distributed between 0 and buckets.length minus 1. So after I've calculated what bucket this goes into, I'm simply going to say buckets sub b. So this is one of the things. If all I'm going to do is just add them in, then I would just cons it on. And when I'm done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all of the buckets, stick them back in the array, and call insertion sort on the array. And why am I calling insertion sort? Remember, insertion sort's really fast if the array is already sorted. Insertion sort on A. The other way to do this would be to borrow the insert method that we wrote up here. And I could copy this and put it down inside of my bucket sort. And instead of just consing onto bucket sub B, I could make bucket sub B equal to an insert of X on bucket sub B. So either way we want to do it. You can either use the insertion sort at the end or you can insert things in sorted order. Between these, I need to move things back from the buckets into A. And so I need to run through all my buckets for bucket in buckets, x in bucket, a sub something equals x. And that something, in order to make this work, I am going to create a var i, which starts off at 0. This is i. And every time through, i gets one bigger. OK. Let's see if first that run, or actually if it compiles. Actually, before we do that, we can go ahead real quick and see just add in the timing for this. We already have code written that will do our timing tests. Uh, type mismatch found double required int. Oh, yep. It looks like I mistyped an int someplace when I was building my... Oh, nope. My problem here is I have all of this. It's a happy double, but in order to index into my array, I need an int, so I need to call to int on it. Okay. And there we go. Uh, now, for these particular numbers, you can see the bucket sort beat out bubble sort, min sort, and insertion, insertion sort. It did not beat out the shell sort. It would almost be interesting to try this with larger values uh, of, or larger numbers of numbers. I'd probably comment out my bubble, min, and insertion sort and just let these two fight it out. You also do want to play around with how many buckets you make. Uh, there can be advantages to larger or smaller. You don't really know which way to go until you test it and know how Scala is going to, to do that. The fact that you're making another array and the fact that you are consing on to lists, there is memory overhead to the bucket sort. But the bucket sort, as things get bigger and bigger and bigger, is typically going to scale fairly well. So that's an example of a sort that is kind of customized for a particular type of data. Once again, it's the bucket sort sorts doubles that are uniformly distributed inside of a range. If you don't have that, don't use bucket sort. But if you happen to know that that's what your data is like, the bucket sort can work rather well for you.